Hi! In this video, we will make this short animation in Laser Shoujin. This is a beam show effect that can be used as part of a larger show in the timeline or live mode. To make this animation, we must learn about some useful features in the editor mode, such as blend modes, animation functions, and the editing scope. Before we start, you should make sure that the YouTube video is set to the highest possible resolution, otherwise the lines on the screen might be hard to see properly. First, let's break this animation down. If we press uh, P to switch between 2D and 3D mode, we can see the animation more clearly. As you can see, it's a short loop made out of two lines that rotate and change colors in a cool way. I'll put the original animation in the corner of the video so we can use it as a reference. But then let's create a new blank file. First, let's set the target length of the animation. We want it to last about uh, 2 seconds and that's uh, 120 frames at the default speed of uh, 60 frames per second. First, we'll focus on the two lines and their movement, and ignore coloring for now. We see that the animation is basically made out of two lines. So we can draw that in the canvas here. We just have to just select the uh, line shape tool and then draw the lines. You can hold down uh, S to make this a square grid, and that makes it a little bit easier to draw. Let's study the original rotation. You can see that the lines rotate 360 degrees and then kind of reverse and goes back to the original angle. You can also see in the middle of the animation that the lines kind of contract into the middle and then expand out again. But let's ignore that for now. So, to make the rotation animation First, select both the lines. Uh, we can do that by holding down control and then clicking on them. Or in this case, you can just right click and select all objects. Now, just click the animation checkbox enabled down here. And also, since the rotation first rotates uh, one way and then reverses back into the starting position, we can choose this animation function here. You can see the line goes up and then go down to the starting position, which is what we want. If we just left it at this default animation function, the object was just would just rotate once, but not rotate back. We could manually make it rotate back a second time, but since we are able to combine the animation into one using this animation function, we'll do that. Okay, now we can rotate the selected lines by clicking and dragging this looping arrow symbol in the corner. We drag it all around this anchor symbol in the middle until it reaches 360 degrees. The anchor is the pinning point around which the objects are rotated. We can move the anchor, but in this case we want it in the middle to make the arrows rotate around the center. Okay, now let's press space to watch the animation so far. We can see the lines rotate in one direction and then back to the other direction. But it's much less smooth than the original rotation. So to make it smoother, we can use this animation function instead can see it goes up and then down again just like this or animation function but it's a smoother curve so first let's undo the animation we just did by uh, using the menu here or uh, control C then we reselect the lines 
and rotate and again. Now they look perfect. Now let's start coloring the lines. We could have just selected the proper coloring before we even drew the lines to begin with, but since we didn't, they are just white. But that's okay, we can change the coloring of existing items by using the reapply tools down here. In the original animation, we can see that the lines are first colored in a pattern gradiently alternating between uh, green and black. So let's choose the gradient color tool here. A few options uh, appear on the screen. Notably we have both a primary color selector and a secondary color selector. We, we actually have four color selectors because there's an animation counterpart for each of the primary and secondary colors. But let's turn off animation just a moment to make things clearer. If we now select green as the primary color and black as the secondary color and then click reapply colors down here, we get this. This is not quite what we wanted because there is only one alternation between green and black and the original file have four. So we can increase the frequency here to four instead. Please select the objects and reapply colors again. We're getting closer. But there's one less one problem still. In the original file we see the outer lines fade to black, but in this file there's a sharp edge of green at the edges. We can fix this by switching the primary and secondary color to make black be the outermost color and green take the place of black. Perfect, now we have the same kind of coloring as the original file. Now, over the course of the original animation, we can see the color changes to red and then back to green. There's also a little flash of white in the middle, but let's ignore that and just animate the change from green to red and back again. Let's turn back on animation and we can see the two animation counterpart color selectors here. This is what the primary and secondary color will animate towards. So if we just set them to the, be the same thing as the actual primary and secondary color, we will in effect have no animation at all. But if we select red instead of green on the animation counterpart, now the green color will animate to red and back again since we have selected this up and down uh, animation function. So let's reapply the colors again and then play and yes the color animates from green and to red and back to green. We're pretty close now all we need to do now is animate this little shrinking and turning to white in the middle of the animation, as you can see here. But how can we make this animation just cover this section in the middle and not the entire length of the animation? The answer is we need to use the animation scope. The scope decides what part of the file we are editing and it's shown as a blue highlight on this little timeline below the canvas. You can see now that the whole timeline is covered by this blue highlight here. But we can hold down shift and then drag our mouse over a section. And now only that section has this blue highlight. You can also use the scope button here to set exact frames to start and stop the scope. 
any reapplying we now do will only cover this section here. This means that animations will start here and end here, instead of covering the whole frame, whole file I mean. So what's left to do? If we see the original file, it turns from the original color and into pure white and then back again. So, how do we animate this? Well, we can try changing both the primary and secondary color for the animation counterpart to white and then click reapply colors. But we can see a problem. Since our animation started with the black and green uh, pattern, this also starts uh, in this pattern at the start of our scope. It does flash to white and back, but the edges are wrong. This is because uh, the new reapply color animation replaces all the colors in our scope with the one in our new animation. But what we really want is just to flash the white and preserve the colors that were there before. So the way we can do that, let's just undo first. The way we can do that is to change the reapply color blend mode. You can see here next to the reapply color button that we have currently selected the replace mode. The text is a bit small but hopefully you can read it. The replace blend mode means that all the color is simply replaced. Uh, if we instead click this button until we reach the add blend mode, we can instead add more color on top of the existing color which is what we want to do with white. As you know, black is really an absence of color, so if we choose black, uh, it means we leave the colors alone, because we are adding black, means the meaning we are adding nothing. But if we add white, it will replace all the colors with white, because white is all the colors. So. Let's use a solid color and simply select the uh, base color as black and then the animation counterpart as white. This will animate the color from black to white and back again. But since we have the add blend mode, this will simply affect the color by adding the white and leaving it alone when the color is black. So let's try to apply this now. We play the file. Yes. You can see now that the original animation starts with nothing and then it fades in black and no, white and then out again without affecting the underlying colors. Now the only thing left is shrinking the animation down at the same time that it flashes into white. You can see the lines get closer together and then out again. This can be done in much the same way as the rotation was done by simply dragging this diagonal arrow in the corner here and make it smaller. This will animate inside this scope in the middle the lines to be smaller and then out again since again we have this back and forth animation function. So if we play this we now have the same thing as we had in our original file.
And there you have it. That's the whole animation finished. Some of this you could probably have made even easier in the timeline mode. But the point of this video was to demonstrate some advanced features in the editor mode. Hopefully we will make another video about the timeline mode later. That's it for now. Next time we will take a look at how we can easily trace a logo or drawing and make it into a laser projection. Thanks for watching.